Very good evening, and thanks for clicking on to the Friday edition of Vogue's European Outlook for 3rd of March. The last time the Mandrillion Oscillation was in Phase 7, 8, and in the 1, we had this temperature profile across the European continent. This was back in December, of course, a below-average month, and the only below-average month for the entire 2022 year. And uh, it looks as if the Mandrillion Oscillation is rotating back into favourable phases for the first time since December, may I add. And there is some very key differences all around. Despite having all the ingredients coming together, it still doesn't guarantee that we have you know, a particular outcome. And we've seen that over the years, of course, with forecasts and myself and, you know, very much included in that, that I have seen all the parameters coming together and it's simply not materialized. So in order for, you know, a particular pattern, i.e., you know, a March of 2013, a March of 2018, uh, you know, 09, 10 winters and whatnot, um, it really, you know, it's a bit of potluck, but also it all, it, Everything has to come together perfectly. And you also have to factor in global sea surface temperature profile and position of the warm and cool pools and whatnot. So very, very complicated stuff. And um, certainly at this moment in time, I'm quite intrigued by what I'm seeing with regards to the Mangelian Oscillation. Very, very amplified, um, as you can see here going from phase seven in the eight and then potentially in the one here. So the last time, like I said, that we've seen this Mangelian oscillation, not as strong as it is now, but, you know, entering these favorable phases for high latitude blocking and cold was back in December. And of course it did deliver the only cold and average month during last year, of course. Key differences, stronger than it was back then. Of course, we're at the opposite end of the winter season now, of course, so that has to be taken into consideration in terms of the atmosphere, the dynamics. Sea surface temperatures are different now compared to what they were. We've got colder sea surface temperatures surrounding the UK and indeed other parts of the world as well. That has also different influences on the atmosphere also. So all aspects have to get taken into consideration. There are some teleconnections, i.e. the EPO and the WPO with the Pacific that is... You know, not playing ball as much as you would like to see, but certainly I think um, all in all, there is plenty of reason to believe that we have got not just a cold week coming up next week, but I do believe that March overall will be a cold than average month. I do think that the UK is in the battle zone, milder trying to come in from the southwest, colder coming in from the northeast, and there will be a real fight, a very interesting fight at that. And I think overall, based on the fact that this is another key difference, the last time the MJO was rotating into the cold phases, we did not have a response following a major sudden stratospheric warming. So everything appears to be coming together. Whether you want to call for an extreme month like 2013, you do that at your peril. At this moment in time, I do believe that we've got a cold week coming up next week. We've got a very interesting week. Yes, it isn't completely out of, the, out of the ordinary for the month of March. Every second or third March, we do get cold spells. We do get snowy conditions. So it's nothing unusual. Um, I want to emphasize that. It's trying to find the balance between showing you what I'm seeing, but also not jumping on the, the, the bandwagon of hype. But I do think there is plenty of potential within the pattern to deliver what could arguably be an extreme pattern and i do know there is some weather sources out there that are kind of going for the extreme i'm hesitating in saying that i do think march is colder i do think we're going to have plenty of interest in snow events to speak about and we do have the potential to have a run of 20 plus days where it could be firmly below average temperature wise but we've got the favourable MJO for the first time really since December. We're also coming off the back of a major sudden stratospheric warming. In fact, a two twofold uh, reversal in the mean winds surrounding the uh, northern hemisphere, and indeed we've got um, you know, an NAO that's going negative, an Arctic oscillation that's going negative, and uh, you know, basically we just have to sit back and wait and see what the pattern delivers. 
But this is the month of March so far, albeit very, very early in the month, and we're already kind of leaning on the colder side of average. Look at Spain and France. That is very, very noteworthy chill to open the month. And, of course, it was a cold end of February down here as well. Very warm compared to average across Scandinavia. But remember what I showed you in the ECMWF weeklies yesterday, the big contrast, the big turnaround that is expected by the ECMWF in terms of once that area of high pressure moves up towards Greenland, we open the door to the freezer and Scandinavia is the first place to turn cold. So instead of having a very warm start to the month, we could, we could end up winding up a very cold month for uh, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Russia and places that you know were very, very mild during the month of February. So it's all to play for, folks. And of course, the details in terms of next week still very much open to question. Uh, it is going to all hinge on two features moving south. That opens the door to the Arctic and um, it is going to be uh, snow piling in from a north northeasterly direction through the early portion of the week. Then as we push towards the middle and second half of next week, the Atlantic becomes more involved once again. How much colder is in place over the UK? How much influence does the Atlantic have on the UK? These are all golden questions that we will be uh, certainly very intrigued to see as we go forward. Let's have a look at the GFS initially. This is the current setup. So we've got that area of high pressure still in place. Pressure hasn't dropped here at the house below, what, 1,033 millibars in the last pretty much a week, actually. So just remarkable. No rain to record. Pressure, you know, plus uh, 1030 millibars. And it has been an incredibly stagnant, I suppose you could say, boring weather pattern. But it is about to change. And uh, let's have a look and see what we're going to be looking at. So this area of high pressure kind of bounces around, as you can see here, pretty much to the west of Ireland here. Now we're starting to see feature one uh, appearing to the northeast of, uh, just off the northeast coast of Iceland. We're starting to see the cold gathering here over the Norwegian Sea. Plenty of uh, convective snow showers developing with that cold northerly flow. And watch this space as we get the pressure coming in, areas of low pressure moving off North America, eastwards towards this area of high pressure. Meanwhile, we've got that flow coming down to the north. This area of high pressure then gets forced northwestwards, and then it's all to play for as we progress towards the end of this upcoming weekend and through next week. So we've got, like I said before, two scenarios in terms of how we get snowfall. Northwestly flow or northeastly flow, should I say. So cool winds, snow showers produced in that. The north of Scotland, down the eastern side of Scotland, northeast England, that is your highest chance of seeing snow just in that north to northeastly flow. Further south and west and southwest, you're likely to see clear blue skies because a lot of that moisture that does get picked up from the cold seas surrounding the UK, the moisture tends to get wrung out as it crosses over the hills of northern and eastern portions of the UK. You're left pretty much in clear, sunny, crisp skies. Where the sun shines, of course, the strong sun at this time of the year means that the temperatures do uh, respond. But of course, uh, where it's cloudy, where there's snow, temperatures will struggle to get above the freezing mark in places such as Aberdeenshire, uh, Caithness, Sutherland, Invernessshire. Could be talking about a few days where it barely gets above the freezing mark in a few places. So we're approaching the end of the weekend. We've got system or feature number one comes through, as you can see here. That will likely be primarily of rain. As that moves uh, down a little bit of colder air in the back side, so we'll see the, the freezing level coming down somewhat. Then this particular feature here that develops, if you notice here, let's have a quick look actually at the UK view because this is quite interesting to see. And remember, the details are going to be very, very uh, open to uh, subject change as we go into the early portion of next week. But let's get to the right time frame here and you can see how this all pans out here. So there's that feature comes south 
That's system number one. Then the secondary feature comes down. You notice here it starts to develop and we're going to enhance potentially the snow across the far north of uh, Scotland here. Um, we've got uh, a mix of rain, sleet and snow over the higher ground, south, southeast Scotland, northern portions of England here. And of course, at this stage, this is 12 o'clock on Monday, the, we don't, we're not in fully in the cold air. It's actually... Uh, only Scotland uh, that is seeing the colder at this stage. And then as we progress through Monday, that system runs down, uh, deepening quite substantially, actually, off the latest run of the GFS. If you notice here, we could see some significant snow potentially across the northern and eastern portion of the UK. This here boundary right here marks the cold front, and that is the door opening to colder air coming in from the north. And then we start to see those snow showers piling in across the north and all the way down uh, through the UK, as you can see here, that we have that cold northerly flow. So this is Tuesday. We're well in the cold air by the time we reach Tuesday. Uh, stinging northerly winds, snow showers, some a, a mix of you know, showers and sunshine, but certainly feeling very, very raw indeed. Notice here, as we progress towards the early hours on Wednesday, Notice this uh, system here just appearing in this, the bottom left-hand corner of the chart. That feature is worth paying attention to because that is a system that is going to ride across the southern half of the UK. Exact track position. It could go further north. It could go further south. That is going to be the big question. But we could see the potential for a significant snow event across the southern half of Ireland, southern portions of the UK, and position of that low is going to be critical in terms of where it sees rain to the south of the system, rain to the north of the system. We're going to see snow here. And that looks as if uh, it could be uh, something very interesting indeed. And notice here, as we continue to press towards the end of the week, still colder in place. Notice this feature here coming in from off the Atlantic. Now notice that there's a lot of snow associated with that feature as it bumps into the cold, as that moisture bumps into the cold air, as you can see here. But exactly where this system comes in, because remember, it's going to be pulling in Atlantic air. So further north, more of the UK is in the milder. Further south, more of the UK is in the colder air. So these are the, the complications within the forecast that we simply do not know yet because we're only on Friday. We're talking about a week away. And uh, but I'm pretty much confident now that you know things are coming together. We are going to see snow next week. Uh, some will see it. Some potentially won't see it. But the fundamental uh, take home from this video today is that it is going to be a cold week next week. Exactly how cold it gets, how much snow we get, where we get it, how cold the temperatures are both by day and by night. I think double digits below freezing is well within the realms of possibility, actually, if we get the right ingredients. Finally, ECMWF, you can see here, we'll play through the loop. We've got that uh, system coming down. Notice here that feature, There's a, um, that initial system, like the GFS, comes down uh, late on Sunday. That system number one, system number two, follows it. That really is the, the door opener to the Arctic Air coming down we're in that northerly flow we've got snow showers piling in from the north possibly the northeast then there's that system coming in now the ecmwf notice here that it has a feature a little bit further south so the uk stays more in the cold air it looks as if the moisture associated with that low stays a little bit further south but we're keeping an eye on this second feature coming in looks as if the cold air may win out longer potentially with this but then it comes through. We've got an outbreak of snow on the north side, rain on the south side with the milder air on that south flank. And then we continue to see these features coming in from a, north, a more southerly direction. So I'm of the thinking anyway that we're going, the, the bulk of the UK, with exceptions of the south and southwest, the majority of the UK stays in that cold air right the way the next week the next weekend so we'll, we'll wait and see what happens i'll show you in tomorrow's video the snow charts here because I, i'm kind of out of time but it's all about the devil in the detail we will continue to watch this on a daily basis plenty of things to look at 
keep it right here on my YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. I'll see you again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.